In this section, we will talk about proximity analysis using buffers. Buffer operator creates buffer zones from a given feature. It can be either buffer around point feature, buffers around line features, or buffers around areas or polygons. Buffers can be applied either with vector data model or raster data model, and each uh, has its advantages and disadvantages. So, for example, if we create buffer zones along a line feature, such as in this case, this yellow line is the <coughs> Beltline Highway here in Southwest Raleigh, uh, we can create these buffer zones with different, uh, different widths or different distances. So here we have two buffer zones at 250 meters and then one very wide buffer zone that goes up to two and a half kilometers. These distances are measured from the center of the cell to center of another cell. That means that uh, the reso raster resolution defines the step at which we can create these buffer zones. And uh, uh, we can use different types of measurement of distances. If we are using Euclidean distance, then the, distan then the buffer is created by drawing a circle around each uh, grid cell center and then all of the cells that fall within this circle, and by fall within this circle, I mean that their center falls within this circle, will belong to this buffer. Uh, this is a small illustration of the issue of the uh, relation between the rust resolution and the width of the buffer. So for example, if we want to do a 250 meter buffer on 30 meter raster, the mult closest multiple is 240 meter. So our buffer will be actually wide only 240 meter. If we want exactly 250 meter, we need to resample uh, to 10 meter resolution. And here we have similar issue with uh, 500 meters. Again, it's not a multiple of 30 meter, so we need either to resample or we say that the accuracy of our buffer width is within 30 meters. So 500, it will be 510. So once we design these B, uh, buffers or once we create these buffers, what can we do with them? We can pose different questions that are where proximity to this feature is important. For example, we can combine this buffer operation with map algebra to solve zone of influence or uh, other types of proximity tasks. So let's look at an example where we want to find developed areas within 250, 500 uh, and two and a half kilometer distance from highways, assuming that those that are close will have high noise impact, those that are farther will have low noise impact. So we will be measuring the noise impact by distance to highway. Great simplification, but a, as a first approximation, it may work. So let's say if we have uh, a land use map land, and within this land use map land, we have uh, developed areas represented as category one and category two. And then we have a buffer, ma buffer map that we have just created. We can then write a map algebra expression that will extract uh, from land use map all that land that is located within the buffer using the AND operator. So this is how that map will look like. The, the orange areas have high impact, then the light green will be moderate, 
and darker green will be low noise impact. So using this map, we can, for example, plan further noise monitoring to find out whether there is a really high noise impact and addition uh, of noise barriers if it proves necessary. We can ask additional questions. For example, whether there are any schools affected in high and moderate no noise area. That means that instead of overlaying the buffer with raster map, we can overlay the uh, buffer with a point map. And we can also ask question how many people live in this high noise area. So let's look at how to solve this, uh, how to answer these questions. So we have already a school point map. We can convert it to raster using an attribute school capacity so that we get the number of students. And then we have the buffer map. And again, we can create a similar uh, map algebra expression where if there is a school and at the same time, the buffer class is less than four. That means high and moderate noise area, which are classified as two and three. Then we will write into our output map school capacity. And if this condition is not fulfilled, it will be null. That means that the school's noise, this map, will uh, include those raster cells where the schools are within the high and moderate noise area and the value will be number of students in that school. And then we can very easily compute the number of students affected by applying sum to this map schools noise. So just with three commands, converting the schools to raster uh, what single map algebra operation and sum, we can compute how many students will be affected by noise from highways. This is how the result will look like. Uh, so most of these blue, blue dots are schools that are not affected, but we have three schools. One is here, another one here, another one here that are located in high noise um, impact areas and the number of students in this school is 966. So then we also ask question whether we can find out how many people live in high noise area. That's a little bit more difficult because the data for the, uh, the population data are usually associated with census block. And census block is a polygon and these polygons can be very small. For example, here, here we can compute it exactly. But then there are some of these polygons, some of these census blocks are pretty large like this one. And you can see that uh, if you query this polygon, you will find out that there is 701 people living in this block. Out of that, 109 is children, but we can't really say how many live in this high impact area uh, because we don't know how they are distributed within this polygon. So we either need to make an assumption that the distribution of people here is uniform. So if this is, for example, 10% area, then 70 people will be impacted or we will need to acquire additional information about where are the homes located within this block and how many people live there. Uh, so this was an example where we used buffers along a line. We can generate buffers also uh, around areas. And I will use uh, buffers around areas to illustrate Euclidean and Manhattan distance metrics. So when we use Euclidean, we will draw a circle around each point on the boundary of the, of the rasterized area around which we want to uh, create a buffer. And the buffer will look like this. 
if we use Manhattan distance matrix, then instead of drawing a circle, we will be following the uh, following just the raster grid cells in X and Y direction. And the shape of the uh, buffer will be much sharper. So it will look like this. And we can use buffers around areas to find, for example, all locations or all streets that are within walking distance from lakes. And you can see that the shape of the buffer will depend on what kind of metrics we have, we have chosen. And in addition to lines and areas, we can also create buffers around points. For example, we can do an analysis where we would identify those schools that do not have any vegetation within 900 meter distance. So as a first step, we will create a 900 meter buffer and to do a more detailed analysis, we can do several uh, that buffer with several steps from 150 meter to 900 meter if we want to analyze it at different distances. And then we overlay the buffers with land use map in a similar way as we did for the noise impact. And you can see that there are, um, there are school mostly uh, inside the belt line that have very little vegetation, very little forest around them. And the, the schools that have more vegetation, uh, vegetation are really, this is on Centennial, and uh, they have lost some of that because of the golf course mm, and also in the suburbs. And that's disappearing actually in this area as well. So you can then, for example, if you are a city planner, you can plan where more trees should be planted. So that was all briefly about buffers and we can now move on to even more complex proximity analysis and uh, that's cost surfaces.